my consumption rate on my fighter is all over the shop. This one is three quarters. This one is about quarter. So stick with me and we'll dabble in why this is the case. G'day folks, Jason here from the Utter Farm. We're actually on the Utter Farm property today. Just checking out the oil levels in the Kubota before we go out and roll out some fodder. It's winter time here in Queensland, Australia. We're going to roll out some fodder today to try and save some of the forage for coming months. But before I do roll out the forage, I want to have a talk about the fodder itself. I've got two types of fodder on this property at the moment. And the, there's a various difference, or sort of, sort of say a vast difference on the consumption rate on one compared to the other. On one of them, I'm getting probably 30% some consumption rate with the 70% left on the ground. But on the other, I'm getting 70% roughly consumption rate with 25% left on the ground. I want to go through the difference and why that is so. That way you guys, when you're buying fodder, can ask the questions and you're not getting stuff that you don't want. Not that it's a waste, because it can go back on the ground and arm your soil and build that thatch layer up. So what, what we got here is barley straw. If you have a look through the fodder, it's full of stem. Hence why it's given the name straw. Because a lot of it is just stalk and stem and leaf. When it comes to barley straw, what they do is it's a byproduct of the barley itself. So they'll come through, when it forms that grain or the barley, they'll come through and head it with a heading machine and that's their cash crop. They will sell that grain off. Then they'll come back through and take the rest of the plant or the straw. But what that does is once they cut that head off, the, the energy or the goodness is in the head itself. This plant, then all the energy runs back down and into the ground. By the time they come back and bale this straw and cut this straw for baling, I would have to say there's 50 to 80% of the energy gone depleted. It's either in the head or by the time they come back and harvest it, it's depleted and run back into the ground. Hence why we're only getting, I'd say 30 to 25% of this consume when we put it on the ground. You're left with that 70, 75% on the ground that the cattle leave. Unlike barley hay where the seed is left on, the plant has matured and it's throwing that seed head. Then they cut it when it's in a premium state. So they're trapping the energy inside the stalk, the leaf and the head. And it's a lot more beneficial and the, the nutrient content of barley is far superior of that of barley straw, which is depleted in energy. They, they ripped off the head, sold the cash crop, and then they're left with this straw, which they bale. So barley hay is a lot different than barley straw. So when you're looking for high energy, high protein, always get the barley straw, sorry, get the barley hay instead of barley straw. The reason why I've got the barley straw is last year we had well, we're supposedly supposed to go through that bad drought period, which never happened. It happened to be one of the wettest times we had on record. So I ended up buying half a semi full of this barley straw to get me through the supposedly drought. This fodder is Rhodes grass. It's three year old, unlike the barley straw, which is only last year's crop. Three years ago, this was bailed. The difference is there's no grain on this for a cash crop. It's purely grown for fodder and premium fodder. What they do here is, as it comes to the seed head and reach the pen, they cut it. And it would be around about that one o'clock in the afternoon when it's full of sugar. Before they cut it, they put a bricks meter on it, ensuring that they've hit it in its premium state, high in sugar and energy. When the bricks meter is up, like I mentioned, around that mid afternoon to one o'clock, it's cut. What that does is when they cut it, it traps the goodness inside the plant, inside the Rhodes grass. It doesn't allow to, to the energy of that plant to run back into the ground. Had they let it come to full maturity, full, heat, full seed heads, the seed had dropped. Once that does its seed drop, the plant has finished its job. 
it drains or depletes an energy back into the ground. And then it would be no better than having barley straw. But because it's sold for fodder in a premium state, it's it, it, it's just come to seed here before it has time to drop those seeds and it's harvested. And that's the difference. That is three year old fodder compared to 12 months old. Because that was harvested for its premium state, the energy stays in it longer. I'm getting consumption rate of 75%, 70 to 75% of my rose grass compared to that 25 to 30% of the barley straw because the cattle know it's higher energy. Barley straw, why they're not eating as much is number one, the taste. There's no energy in it. There's no sweetness. There's no, they can't get the goodness out of it. It's purely fiber. It's fibrous material. The rumen is gonna take twice as long, it's been proven, twice as long to break down fibrous material compared to that which is full of energy which is trapped inside of it can break that down because of the goodness is there. The microbes can break it down. It's not fibrous. The goodness is trapped inside and that's why the cows will always stomach that before barley straw. This is in a premium state, even though it's three year old. I can roll that out like I mentioned and I'll eat 75% of that day in, day out. I wouldn't like to go for another couple of years because I know it's starting to get a bit of mold on it now. This barley, this one especially because it's so close to the doorway. This will probably do me at this season and I roll out the barley straw over the next couple of seasons because I've got a couple of bare patches here and I have a couple more burn piles I've got to get rid of and that's good mulch. Get rid of burn pile, seed it, put that over top. So I'm getting the diversity back into the ground. With the, with the rose grass and also with the barley straw, the seeds go back, you get an animal impact on it, you're getting the manure, the urine and the rain, and then it grows back. And then it cycles from there. As the cows come back and eat both spotter, whether it be the barley when it's come to seed, or the rose grass, they pass it through the, the, the four chambers of their stomach. When it sits in the fermenta fermentation tank of the rumen and the microbiology break it down, some of that seeds isn't broken down and it goes all the way through the stomach track and back out on the ground in the manure. And that's where it's got the fertility, the moisture and the seeds are in that manure. And that's the way you broadcast that different types of species and get the diversity across the paddock is in the manure. In desperate times when I really need the fodder, if I can't get quality forage or fodder, I always get fodder that I know has got a seed bank in the bale. It mightn't be the best quality, but you can also put molasses over it to sweeten it up and forcing the cows to eat it. But the main reason I get it is for the seed bank, to add that diversity to the pasture. The side benefit is, is to make this artificial, artificial thatch layer to, hold the, to stop the velocity of the rain and to build up the thatch layer to build fresh topsoil and also to hold the moisture in longer. So on behalf of Butcher and myself, thanks for hanging around and I wish you a good morning, a terrific afternoon and an awesome evening guys. Wherever you're watching this from and we'll catch you later. Come mate, let's go.